Hello and welcome back to my Twitch channel. So this is going to be another live stream on the topic of game development. Um, so I've done two live streams on this already. This is on the topic of Phaser and uh, just creating a 2D game and some of the concepts behind it. Um, so the first one, and I'll just give a recap here. The first tutorial or the first stream focused on, <clears throat> sorry, my I got allergies today. Uh, but the first one focused on just adding images, getting these kind of moving clouds going. The second one focused on collisions uh, and just basic game physics. And now what we're going to do is we're going to be focusing on object pooling and uh, getting more items on the screen. So actually, let me let me refresh this. So this is what we built last time. So basically, we have a coin. It kind of continuously scrolls through. We have a, an obstacle, all of which are very crudely drawn. Um, but we're, we're going to expand upon it so that way we actually get some, some actual gameplay going on um, to lead us into a future stream. Um, so this is live. We're live on, uh, I think today is Saturday. Um, so if you have any questions at any time uh, during the stream, I am periodically peeking over to my other monitor um, to see if, if anyone's engaging in the chat. I can engage back. Um, so definitely make this an interactive experience. I noticed that we have uh, Crutch Corn already on the stream, which is awesome. Thanks for participating, Crutch Corn. Uh, let me hit this button right here just to say I'm live uh, on my stream deck. No idea if it's actually going to work this time. It, it didn't work last time. Looks like it worked this time. Perfect. Uh, so that sent out a message to different channels saying that we're live. Um, so yeah, so let's let's kind of go through the code uh, on what we did on the last stream. And maybe even uh, let's clean up our project a bit. Um, so just kind of as a rehash here to get us up to speed. Um, so this is our phaser config. Uh, we experimented with arcade physics as well as matter JS physics. We're going to be using arcade going forward, uh, at least for this game, um, using very, very defined uh, polygon boundaries or collisions. It's just not necessary for this particular game. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove that code. We're just going to do some cleanup for this one so far. I'm going to save it. Uh, we're going to actually, what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to have debug to true. So that way we can see the collision boxes uh, inside of our game. So I'll actually show you what I'm talking about here. I'll refresh. You'll notice that there is a collision box behind every sprite now. Um, so that's what uh, we're going to be looking at now. Um, so let's go ahead and continue our cleanup. Uh, so going through, uh, we have our scenes, we have some variables. Uh, let's go ahead and start removing things. So for example, um, actually, I don't think I need to remove anything. I think if anything, I need to clean up the directory structure. Um, and actually, let's remove some of this commented code. Um, so like I said, we're not going to be using matter JS for this one. Um, so I'm just going to strip it out to avoid any kind of confusion because we are going to add uh, some lengthier code for this particular stream. Um, but it's it's going to be all in good fun because we're actually going to have uh, something that we can play around with in the end. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete the uh, Matter.js collision events. And I think that is probably good. Another thing that I want to do, you'll notice that I have all of these files here. Um, I probably want to clean up my directories a little bit. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an assets directory. <clears throat> Man, allergies is really, really hit me today. Uh, so I'll be coughing a lot. I have some water here. Um, but let's go ahead and create a directory called assets. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag in every, every media file, basically. And then in the end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete some media files as well. Actually, to be honest, I think, I think we're copying everything over except for the index and the directory itself. Let's copy that over. Let's go ahead and change up what we have here. So clouds is now inside of assets. Likewise, this one. I also got a new keyboard, so I'm trying to get used to it. Uh, the layout's a little different than my last one. So uh, typos may be frequent. I actually got a different mechanical keyboard today. I'm actually trying out the Keychron keyboard K2. Uh, versus my Aki that I had that was plugged in previously. I just needed something Bluetooth. I don't like having cables on my desk. Uh, let's go ahead and chase safe. Sprite Physics is in the assets. We'll refresh the game just to make sure I didn't break anything. 
<clears throat> I'll refresh. Looks like it's still working. Uh, now what I probably want to do is I probably want to start removing things. Um, so I am using sprite sheets. So all of the individual graphics that we have here. Um, so the plane, I don't need uh, the original graphics anymore. So I'll delete those. Um, I'll keep the affinity designer files just in case I need to regenerate them. Uh, the obstacle, uh, that was never part of a sprite sheet. Um, I think that was all. Actually, the explosion, because now we're using uh, the plane. I don't think we have uh, explosion separately now. Yeah, that's gone as well. Let's go ahead and delete that. Um, sprite physics, good. Explosion we can keep, obstacle, plane. I think we are good. Let's go ahead and, re and refresh and make sure that uh, our cleanup didn't break anything. And uh, it didn't break anything, yeah. Uh, so the Keychron, I, I really didn't want to burn 100 bucks on a Keychron keyboard. Um, <laughs> I, I, it's hard to justify spending so much money on a keyboard. And I like the Aki. It was a it was a blue mechanical switch. Uh, it was loud. You could hear it from basically uh, a mile away or across the neighborhood. Um, I'm using a K2 brown switch now. I'm using Bluetooth. This is a version two of the Keychron. It has Bluetooth 5.1. I know the reviews are mixed. I like it. It feels nice. It feels, I guess, better than than the Aki. The Aki was good. It was like 30 bucks. Um, but um, so far, the Keychron has grown on me, and as long as it keeps a charge of four weeks, like it claims, I'm going to be a happy guy. Um, so everything's good so far. Um, so if you're looking for a Bluetooth mechanical keyboard, give it a shot. I think I, I ordered it here in the States. It came from China. It came like in two days, which is amazing. I don't know how it came so fast, um, but it, it was good. All right. So we did some cleanup. Let's go ahead and go back into our code now. And uh, let's see what we got. All right. Gonna have some messages coming in through my watch every once in a while to distract me. Uh, sorry. Let me actually mute those. There we go. Um, all right. So uh, as far as our, our game goes, um, I think we're good. Let me add some spacing just so that way it's a little more readable. Um, because we, we do want to clean it up because it's going to, it's going to get confusing if it's not cleaned up. All right. So the goal, the goal here is, let me, let me go back to the game. Sorry. Uh, when we collect these Bitcoin or whatever the kind of currency or whatever the point system is, we want to keep score and maybe display it up in the corner. We want to have some text. Um, so we're going to be displaying some text here. Um, and it's going to basically increase every time we get one of those coins. Um, so that's part one. Part two is we're going to be worrying about object pooling. If you've never heard of object pooling before, so basically what you see on the screen here with these two other obstacles or two other objects aside from the plane is if I were to add a lot of them and I were to recreate one every time it uh, passes through my plane or whatever the scenario be, it's going to cause some performance issues. The more I have, the more performance issues I'm going to have. So with object pooling, what you're doing is you're creating a pool of objects that are created ahead of time. And as you kind of no longer need an object, instead of destroying it, what you're doing is you're adding it back into the pool. Um, so every time you need to obtain one of those objects, you're just taking one that's available in the pool. Um, so you're not creating, you're not destroying beyond the initial create. Um, and because of that, your performance is going to be that much better. Um, so that's, that's the typical way that you want to do business when it comes to games. This particular game, as simple as it is, probably won't take any kind of performance hit if we did not use an object pool, but you kind of want to get in the habit of using an object pool um, because it will help you longer term. So let's, uh, let's start with the text uh, because that's going to be the easiest uh, thing to start with. Um, so what I'm going to do is what I'm actually going to go towards the top and we're going to add just some text. So let's go ahead and maybe, uh, it doesn't really matter. I could do uh, before the animations, after, doesn't matter. I'm going to say this dot add dot text. I'm going to position it. So 10 in the X, 10 in the Y, uh, and I'm going to give it a default value. So I'm going to say score 
maybe I say it in all caps, score of zero. So we're gonna start it off at zero, um, and then we're gonna increase that as we progress. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like. Um, and it's probably gonna be unattractive, small, awful, you name it, but we did add a score. So it's small, awful, exactly as I said. So let's uh, style that in a basic sense. Um, you could definitely get like, let's see, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, make it more attractive than what I'm gonna do. Um, but that's that's totally up to you. And I'm gonna break this up into multiple lines. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some style information. So this is like a, a kind of options or a configuration object that we're working with. So I'm gonna say font size and i'm going to say let's go ahead and say maybe 40 something very large uh, let's go ahead and say that we want the color the color is already white uh, maybe not the best because we're using clouds there and as they pass through you're not going to be able to see the score um, so i'm going to use a hexadecimal number it's just going to be black uh, what i'm going to do next is i'm going to make it bold so i'm going to say uh, font style and you can, you can access all of this in the documentation. It's not, unfortunately, it's not straight CSS. Um, at least I don't think it is. It doesn't look like it to me. Um, there are a few options that you can use. Um, so it's not, it's not the full scope of CSS. Otherwise, I mean, I think that'd be like font weight if I wanted to bold it. Um, so we have that. Um, let's go ahead and say that maybe we want, um, let's just leave it at that for now. And I'm gonna save it. And I will be bouncing back and forth because it's always nice to see what it is we're creating as we're creating it when it comes to game development because you actually get to see results in that circumstance instead of building some CLI application or back end that you don't get the same kind of sense of results. Uh, so we have a score. Uh, we have, uh, it's large, it's black, it's, it should be bold. For some reason it doesn't look bold right here. Um, I'll remove it and see if it makes any kind of difference. If it uh, doesn't make a difference, then we'll resort to the documentation. All right, so it was bold. So it's it's significantly thinner now. I'm gonna add that. What I'm also gonna do, because you know what? When it comes to what we're displaying on the screen, eventually we're gonna have a little bit more than just clouds up there. Um, so I'm actually gonna put a background behind it. So that way we're always sure what we're looking at in terms of the text. Um, so we can say background color. And I'm gonna say that this is going to be uh, maybe a shade of gray. I'm not very creative on my color, so it's basically gonna be white through black color spectrum. Um, so I'm gonna say, uh, this is a, a lighter gray, I think. And uh, what I'm also gonna say is, I'm gonna pad it. So I'm gonna say padding and maybe 10 padding. Oh, that's terrible. All right, so let's see uh, where I went wrong here. So that's all black. Uh, let's go ahead and, and go back. Uh, background color that should be right is it because maybe I have one too many characters in there could be ah much better it's weird that it made it black you you get reactions unlike CLI backend um, <laughs> this is why I prefer front-end work uh, yes, I, I prefer front end too, except for I'm terrible at it in most circumstances. If I were to do a front end website, it would look like 1998 status. Um, but a game is different and uh, not too different because you can see from my graphics that it's quite crude. I mean, I think the clouds came out all right, but the plane, probably not so much. The Bitcoin ripped it off of Font Awesome. And then that obstacle, again, very crude. Uh, so not the best. When the colors are invalid, it's not uncommon to default to black. All right, I didn't know that. That's that's the first time it's happened to me. All right, so we have a score. So let's actually make it work. Um, so in our very basic example right now, we do in fact hit one coin. Um, so we do want it to increase. And there's gonna be numerous ways that you can do this. Uh, the first thing that uh, might come to your mind is, you know what, let, let's set a variable. Um, and actually, let's uh, remove this. I'll probably remove others as well and clean that up. Um, you'll probably say, let's set a variable to say score and uh, let's just increase it and, and that works. Nothing wrong with that. 
Um, you can actually, though, in Phaser at least, I don't know about other game frameworks, is you can actually add properties to your sprites. Um, so in the sense of our game where we're working with a plane or a player, eh, maybe we keep score associated to the player. Um, just like you might associate like hit points or mana or any kind of game uh, stat to your player as well. In this sense, maybe we associate it to the player. Um, so what we can do is when we create our plane, I'll scroll to it. Uh, let's go ahead and add something to it. And it doesn't really matter where you add it. I'm going to probably do it before the animation just for my own sanity's sake. Uh, but let's go ahead and say plane. And we're going to say set data. And maybe what I do is I say score. So this is a key value pair. And the score is going to be zero. So how do we set that score? Well, we have our collision event. The collision with the Bitcoin is right here. So what we can do is, and this may be, we may end up reverting back to the, the variable scene. I could be lying to you here. But let's go ahead and say let um, score, because I don't think you can, I mean, I could one line it, it might look a little jank. Um, but let's go ahead and say plane dot get score. And I'm gonna say, uh, it's not get score, get data. And, uh, Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say score plus plus, and I'm gonna say plane.setData. Actually, I don't know if I like this. We'll, we'll, we'll see it work and then I'll change it up. Uh, so set data score, I'll say score. Uh, this, will, this will increase it. Probably what we wanna do now inside of the update scene, um, and actually we don't even have to do it in the, in the update scene. Uh, we can actually do it in the collider as well. If we do it in the update scene, it's probably going to update it too many times. Um, and you know what? Maybe we don't want to do that. Uh, so let's go ahead and say the following. Um, actually, where, is, where did I create that text? And we're up here. Uh, so I want to be able to change the text. I can't do that just like this because I didn't name it anything. But let's go ahead and create a, a variable um, called maybe var score text. Uh, and then we can say score text. And then down inside of our collision, uh, we can say score text dot set text. And in this case, I'm gonna say score plus score because we still have access to the score. Um, and maybe this will work, maybe it won't. We'll find out. So let's go ahead and check it out. Looks like it increased, uh, so that's good. So we we have a way to, to create score. It I don't know how much I like it um, adding at least the score to the to the plane. I mean we could keep it. There's probably better ways to to manage this uh, than what I'm doing here. I don't I don't think there's an increase function for for any kind of uh, data associated to a sprite, uh, but we could look that up later. Um, we don't have to worry about it too much right now. So we have um, we have the text. I think I'm happy with that. So now let's worry about object pooling. Um, so luckily with phaser, we don't have to worry about changing too much. I'm just peeking over at the chat here. We don't have to worry about changing too much. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, I lost my train of thought here for a second. Uh, let's go ahead and, and make our first object pool. Let's go to make a, an object pool for our coins and then we'll worry about creating an object pool for the um, obstacles. Um, so let's go see where we're creating our, our Bitcoin right here. I'm just going to comment this out for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, we're going to create another variable. I'm going to call this one Bitcoin group. So in phaser um, for object pooling, you're actually working with groups. So groups of um, sprites in that in this sense. Um, so what I can do is I can say Bitcoin group and I can say equals this dot physics because uh, we want these Bitcoins to have physics bodies associated to them for collision. But I'm going to say add and instead of saying sprite, I'm going to say group. And for this particular group, uh, well, we need to we need to uh, work on some things here. Got some stray characters here. Um, so let's go ahead and, and add our default key. So the default key is going to represent 
which image is going to be associated to this to this object, each object in the group. Uh, so for this, uh, we called it Bitcoin. Next up, we need to specify the max size of our pool. Um, so the Bitcoin, we can make this as, as large or as small as we want. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set it to 10 right now. Uh, we can optimize it later to see if maybe 10 is too much or too little later. Uh, but let's start with 10 and we'll, we'll start small on the obstacle group as well. Um, by default, I want to say that this is not visible. So when we add all 10 objects to our group, you know what? I don't want them all to show uh, because it's not necessary. We're going to be sliding them in and we're going to be adding them back into the pool. I'm going to say active. So we don't want uh, them to be active. We want to be able to check to see, well, if they're, if they're off screen or they're in the pool, then we want them to be disabled. And this affects uh, things like collision and, and things like that when it's disabled. So we're going to say active is false. All right, so we have our Bitcoin group. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and see if we can uh, get them kind of coming in to our um, scene. Because if I refresh, it's, it's going to break a ton of things like Bitcoin uh, for the collider. Uh, well, that doesn't work anymore, uh, but we can make it work. So actually, it's not, it's not difficult. So instead of Bitcoin, we're saying Bitcoin group. So what we're saying is if the plane collides with any item in that particular group, then that's great. The collision is going to call this logic. Um, and we still have access to each individual Bitcoin of that group. Um, so we can still we can still do pretty much the same logic here, but we do have to make some changes here. So we we want to make sure that it is an active Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin dot active, I have to look at my keyboard because I don't know what keys I'm hitting. Because again, new keyboard, still learning it. Uh, so Bitcoin is active. We want to make sure it's active. Otherwise, the collision should be irrelevant for us, uh, and it should scroll back in. Um, or keep going. Um, we have uh, this right here. Um, what we're actually going to do is we're going to we're going to comment this out uh, because we're not we're not going to control whether or not um, where the position is. If we collide with any Bitcoin um, for this plane, we want to add them back to the pool. Um, so what we're saying, and I could add this up top. Maybe maybe I'll add it up top just so that way we're consistent here. What I can say is Bitcoin group dot kill and hide and I'm gonna say Bitcoin um, so I'm taking whatever Bitcoin collided as long as it's active and I am killing it and hiding it so it will get rid of it uh, it won't destroy it um, we don't want to destroy things because it it takes resources to create and destroy um, so we're just killing it and hiding it and adding it back to the pool I'm gonna save it uh, let's keep going down uh, wherever I made more Bitcoin uh, calls, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna continue changing things. So instead of saying Bitcoin.x because we have no individual Bitcoin, I'm gonna comment this out, and instead what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say Bitcoin group, and I'm gonna say increase x, and I'm gonna say minus four. So what we're saying with this line right here is we're saying let's move every item in this group by negative four. Um, so all 10 Bitcoin are gonna be moving at the same time. And that's fine because they're hidden. They're not active. The ones that are active, uh, we're checking to see inside of our collider if they're colliding and that's only if they're active. So that's fair game. It's gonna work out fine. Um, I think what we can do is we can refresh uh, inside of our browser and see if it works still. In theory, oh, it doesn't. Um, so let's let's keep going and I, I can tell you why so um, It's not working because they're all hidden right now. None of them are active. We've never actually used one of them yet uh, So let, let's go ahead and, and see about enabling one of our Bitcoin um, So I think I have a timer in here Maybe No, I don't because I, I wasn't actually adding anything so we're gonna we're gonna add a timer um, and by a timer I mean something similar to set timeout um, in JavaScript but I'm going to use the, the phaser equivalent of that. I'm going to do it above the colliders, um, keep things kind of close together. Uh, what I'm going to say is I'm going to say this.time.addEvent. 
and it's going to behave like I said, kind of like the set timeout. I don't know if things are happening um, that wouldn't necessarily be happening inside of the set timeout. Uh, you never know. This is a game. You have to worry about FPS. You have to worry about how things render. I don't know if things happen behind the scenes. Um, I'm going to assume that they do. Um, hence why this even exists at all and, and doesn't suggest using the set timeout. Um, but honestly, I don't know. Um, I'm going to say the delay is going to be a thousand. So one second. I'm going to say that this is going to loop forever. So this time, this is going to be more like a set interval in JavaScript. And then every time that this calls, well, I'm going to call the callback. And then uh, inside this callback is where we can actually uh, pull from that group. Um, so let's go ahead and say Bitcoin group dot get. Where should I position it? Well, uh, the previous Bitcoin, we had it positioned at uh, 500. Uh, maybe we, we keep it like that for now. Uh, we, we pull every one of them in at 500 on the X coordinate. Um, and then for the Y, for now, let's just go ahead and stick it at 512. We'll keep things consistent. Um, and then um, this should be fine. We also want to set active because remember, it's not active right now. The set active is true. Um, and you know what? Let's just see what happens. All right, so it's big. It, it came in, it, it waited one second. Uh, it wasn't there from the beginning. Um, see how they keep adding? They're big. We didn't scale them. So let's, let's scale them now. Um, so what I can actually do, I'll, I'll drop this down so that way it's a little easier to read. So uh, set active is true. I'm going to say set scale. The scale is going to be the same. So I had it at 0.15 before. So let's, let's be consistent. Yeah. So they're popping in. Oh, I got two of them in before I died. Um, oh, it's still counting um, because it's still, the collision still counted. I didn't add any logic to say, don't continue counting score if you're exploding. Um, so, um, not bad. Uh, cannot cannot read property set active of null. What's on line one twenty seven here? Ah, all right. So that cannot read property. So we exceeded our object pool. Um, oh, when it when oh oh that was an old comment. Sorry, I'm looking at the chat. Um, so we exceeded our object pool uh, because when we were colliding, we were killing and hiding those Bitcoin as seen on line 135. But if our plane doesn't exist, we're no longer colliding. So these things are flying off the screen forever. Um, so we only have 10 of them in the pool. So after 10 is reached, because they're no longer being destroyed or killed and hide, um, it's going to run out and we're going to error out. So we need to be able to accommodate that. All right. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and accommodate that. So let's see what happens uh, when these things start falling off the screen. So let's, let's, let's do this from the uh, update method uh, because the update is where the actual movement happens. The update is uh, called continuously because every frame calls the update scene. So let's go ahead and add some logic. Um, so our logic, what we can say is Bitcoin group, and I'll explain what we're doing here. Bitcoin group get children. So we're getting every... Um, every single uh, sprite inside of this group. So every single sprite in this pool, and we're going to loop through them. So four each. So each one of them is a single Bitcoin. And we're going to do a check. So this check, uh, we're going to check to see if it's active. So if Bitcoin.active, and uh, we're going to see where it falls in terms of the X position. So we're going to say Bitcoin.x, and we want to make sure that it is uh, less than zero. So we want to make sure that this is an active coin, not something that's hidden. And we want to make sure that it is fallen off the screen. And if it has, well, we can call that familiar function of Bitcoin group dot kill and hide for that particular coin. Let's go ahead and check it out. Let's go ahead and refresh in our browser. And we shouldn't, we shouldn't get that error anymore. We'll let it, we'll let it run for a minute.
you see how we've still got collision boxes here um the the bitcoins are they're not active um so they should i think we'll figure that out in a second um but it looks like it looks like it's working correctly um so next up on our plate i'm i'm looking up oh, got it got to head out thanks for thanks for coming on uh crutch corn um so always always a pleasure to have you on the on the stream so let's go ahead and add some logic let's go ahead and make sure that it doesn't continue counting first uh let's go ahead and go into uh, our code we're going to go to the collider uh for our uh bitcoin here and um actually Actually, I think right here. So um, if Bitcoin.active um, and what we can say is and we'll say plain dot animation. So anims dot get current key. Um, and we're going to make sure that that current key is not uh, not an explosion. So explosion right here. So uh, as long as it's active and as long as uh, the plane isn't going through an explosion phase, uh, then what we can do is we could increase. Uh, otherwise, it's just going to fall off the screen and um, then uh, enter the pool again. Let's check it out. Some of them are not becoming active again. So let's... Uh, See if we can figure that out. Let me see. All right, I think I know what's wrong. Maybe. If it doesn't work, I'll, I'll think of something else. Maybe we'll progress. I've got other things definitely worth showing today too. Um, so let's go ahead and look at, uh, where's the timer? All right, so we have set active. You know what? We're not currently setting the visibility. So we're gonna say set, um, and we're gonna say visible is true. And because remember, when we had created these, uh, they're not only uh, invisible, but they're also inactive. So let's, let's try it. Yeah, it seems to have done the trick. Uh, why some of them were becoming visible and not others? Um, that's a little bit beyond me. I'm not sure why. Um, so it looks like it worked, and it didn't. It didn't start counting points as we uh, were exploding. So we only hit two Bitcoin. Um, let's, you know what? Let's make sure they start off the screen this time. Um, so let's let's go ahead and increase that. So our our default inside of here. Uh, let's go ahead and maybe say 1300 because remember our our screen is is 1280 by 720. Um, so. 1300 should be off the screen and I'll probably be exploded by then, but uh, you can see that uh, We have quite a few coming on the screen now just a constant stream of 10 so these are the same 10 for as long as the game is running the same 10 popping on I'm not creating or destroying um, so this is um, Is quite efficient the object pooling sense so maybe now we start worrying about moving the plane and then we circle back and um, worry about adding an object pool for our obstacles which could destroy the plane um, just just to change things up for just a bit so our plane we, we have a few a few things that we can do we could either decide you know what we're going to move this plane with, with maybe keystrokes uh, we can say maybe we want to move this this plane with uh, swipe events or maybe we just want to move this plane by clicking I kind of want this to be a compatible mobile game in the end. Um, so we're going to worry about clicks rather than keystrokes. We can use gesture events still. It, it's just a little awkward with a mouse. Um, so we're just going to worry about clicks. And I'm, I'm going to show you some tricks here on, on why uh, we're going to do things just a little bit changed up because I don't want to click and have the plane just magically appear there. There's that makes the game too easy. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to change things up and we're going to see uh, what we can end up with. So this is actually going to happen inside of the update scene. Uh, so inside of the update scene, 
uh, we're actually going to have some input logic. And in the first video or the first stream on this particular game, uh, I did have some input event. We're just going to add it back, uh, but we're going to make some changes along the way. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say if this dot input and I'm going to say dot active pointer because that represents a touch event or a click event. And I'm going to say is down. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm just saying is, is something compressed. Uh, otherwise, you know, we're not, we're not clicking anything. Nothing should happen. Um, so let's add some logic now. Um, so let's go ahead and say let position equals, and we're going to say this dot input dot active pointer dot position. So that's going to give us the X and Y because I don't want to have to type in this, this long line every time I want to get the X and Y down here. Uh, so that'll save us a little bit of time. The next thing I want to do is I want to figure out where exactly I'm clicking on the screen. Um, and I want to figure out the distance from where I've clicked to where I currently am. Because the end goal that I want to do is instead of just having my plane magically appear there when I click, I want the plane to seem like it's flying up or flying down. Um, and so that's going to happen over a certain amount of time. Now, I'm also going to change things up as well. So if I refresh again, just so that way you can see what I'm talking about, I'm going to center the plane by default. What I want to do is I want to make sure that there's three positions that that plane can end up in. I want to make sure that it's top, middle, bottom, but I don't want it to be very bottom or very top. I want it to have some kind of padding. Uh, so we're going to define three positions. So let's go back into our code and I'm going to set a variable for this, a global variable. And I really need to clean up some variables, but we'll worry about that uh, at another time. Um, so what I want to do is I want to say var, I want to say positions y. So I'm, I'm just calling it this because this is going to represent every possible y position. And this is going to be an array. Um, so what am I going to do? So rather than being at the zero pixel mark on the y axis, um, because I do want padding, this is a, the height is 720 pixels. So I'm going to say that one possible option is going to be 125. So that's going to be the top. The bottom, and I have a calculator open, um, because I'm not going to try to do math in my head here. Uh, but let's go ahead and say 720 minus 125. That's 595. So that's going to be uh, the other end of, of things. So I'm going to say 595. Uh, so the middle. So the middle, we can get to it uh, two ways here. Uh, well, first of all, we can do 720 um, divided by 2. That's going to be the direct middle. Um, if you really wanted to get extravagant, and it's probably me doing bad math. I'm, I'm not good at math. All right. Um, but what I can do is I can say, uh, 595 minus, uh, 125 divided by two plus 125, probably way, way excessive. I, I don't know how I came up with the number twice. Uh, but you could very easily just divide 720 by two. Uh, so this is going to be 360. So those are going to be our three possible Y positions. Um, so we're going to slide uh, between those three positions and uh, it's going to be interesting. So to do that though, um, in a, in a cool, sorry, I just scrolled uh, to do that inside of our uh, is down, we need to get the distances. So I'm going to say let, and I'm going to say distances, plural Y. So this is, I'm going to get the distance for every, um, every item in that array, uh, because I want to see, well, where did I click the closest to? Did I click the closest to the top or the closest to the bottom, etc.? cetera? Um, so let's go ahead and say equals, and I'm gonna say positions y dot map, and I'm gonna say uh, position singular y. And what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say return, and I can't just say position y minus position y kind of thing because I could end up with negative numbers. I don't really want negative numbers. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say math. So this is JavaScript ABS. So absolute value. It's going to be positive. Um, and I'm going to say position Y minus position dot Y. So I'm taking the position Y from that positions array. Um, so for each one in that array, and I'm going to take the position of where my pointer went down. I'm going to subtract them and get the distance. Um, so if I, if I wanted to, 
Let's go ahead and print it out and see what we end up with. So console.log, and I'm going to say distances y. I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it. I'm going to refresh. doesn't really matter if my plane gets destroyed. I'm going to say click. So when I clicked, and it printed out several because I didn't check to see if it was a click. There is no such thing as a click in phaser. It's either a down or an up. I didn't do any kind of checks. So obviously I held it for longer than a millisecond. Um, but these are the distances. So the first one being the top, my click was um, eight away versus further and further. So I'll click down in the middle. Well, I'm closest to the middle. I'm not directly at the middle. I'm close to the middle. Um, so what I want to do is I want to do a function to see, well, where am I the closest to? It's obvious to see I'm, I'm closest to the middle here, but I need to do this logically. Um, so I'm going to write a function that will check to see where I'm the closest to, and then we can use that data to, to figure out where to place the plane. So let's go ahead and go into uh, our function again, or our, uh, our down event. I'm going to leave that there for now. Uh, there, to my knowledge in JavaScript, there's no way to, to get the smallest without uh, kind of doing a, um, a, a check. I don't think there's a function at least. There could be, if, if you know of one in the chat, if, you've, if you know a function to get the minimum value of an array, please let me know. Um, but either way, we can figure it out. So I'm going to say let, I'm going to say smallest array value equals function. Uh, and I'm going to say array. I'm going to be able to pass in an array. And I'm going to say let index is going to be zero. So I'm going to start at zero. And because I'm, I'm checking for the smallest value, uh, my value is going to start at uh, something very large. So I'm going to loop through my values in my array. So I'm going to say for let i equals 0, i less than array.length, i plus plus. And there's plenty of ways to accomplish this. Uh, but I'm going to say if array i, and I'm going to say less than value, which is uh, very large, and I'm going to say value equals array i. So that way we can keep track. And I'm going to say index equals i. And then outside of the loop, I'm going to say return index. So we're going to return the smallest value. This is a function right here on, on line uh, 174. Um, and with that information, um, so remember, when it came to the score, I set the score on the plane itself. I'm going to set the position that the plane should be uh, based on um, actually setting it to the plane. So basically what's going to happen is I'm going to get the smallest value based on our click. The smallest value, it's, it's, it's ordered in uh, ascending order here. So let me find that variable. So right here. So if I click in the middle, it's going to be index 1. So it starts at 0. This is going to be index 1. So if I set that value to the plane, and then I can do checks inside of my update function that says, you know what, decrease or increase the plane value until it reaches that index. That's how we're going to move our plane. So it's going to it's going to increase or decrease over time. So let's scroll back down. And if, if something doesn't make sense in the chat, please please stop me, um, because it could be a little a little difficult to wrap your head around. I understand. Um, so let's go ahead and go into right below this. Um, so I'm going to say on line 184, I'm going to say plane dot set data. I'm going to say position, and it doesn't really matter. This is a key value, um, so you can call it whatever you want. Position makes sense though, but I'm going to say smallest array value and I'm going to pass it that distances y uh, because I've calculated the array of distances and I just need to figure out which one's which one's closest. Um, I'm actually going to remove that console out right there, that console log. Um, so we have the data. It doesn't really mean anything to us. What I also want to do is where we set the plane. Um, so right here. I'm going to say plane dot set data. And like I said, I want the plane to start in the middle. So I'm going to say position uh, one. I'm also going to set the plane as 360 here. Um, we're, we're, we're setting it up. This is the initial values. Um, so we have the, the value of one. So let's scroll back down. And what we want to do is outside of this is down. We want to do some checks now. So we want to say if we want to say plane dot y and we want to say if plane dot y is greater than 
positions y and we want to get the plane value so we're going to say plane dot get data position um, so because remember position has the actual index so what we're saying is if if the current y is greater than what the plane should actually be at then what we're saying is we're going to say plane dot y minus equal to some value and let's go ahead and set it to five for now we could always speed it up or slow it down later um, we, we want to do the same thing in the opposite direction as well so i'm going to copy this else if less than then what it should be doing is it should be increasing perfect so it's either going to increase or decrease based on where we click and if i were to run it right now you'll notice that the plane moves pretty much forever it should move forever yeah oh, it actually stopped all right so it, it looks like it probably stopped uh because five is divisible by the numbers that we're using if i was using a number like two it probably wouldn't work out because 125 is not divisible by two so in this case it'll never actually equal or shouldn't um actually yeah it uh yeah it'll keep going it'll, i think it'll it'll bounce around it'll keep trying to go up and down up and down up and down we could actually try it so let's uh let's go back let's make this a six So I'll click. Yeah, it bounces up and down like that. I don't know if it's visible on the stream or not, but on my on my screen, I'm looking at OBS right now. It doesn't look like it's showing what I see, but it is bouncing because it cannot land on that exact Y value. Um, so we'll um, let's go ahead and fix that. Uh, let's let's assume that we're not going to be using a divisible by five number. Uh, so let's go back into our code. Uh, so we have our moving up and moving down. Uh, now we need our stop. So basically, we're going to set a threshold. So we're basically going to say if if the y position of the plane um, is within a certain distance of the position that it should be at, then let's go ahead and set that value. Let's go ahead and cheat a little bit. And uh, it'll be so fast that the user probably won't even see it. Um, so what we can say is if... Uh, and we're going to use the absolute again because uh, distance, we don't, we don't care if it's negative. Uh, we just care if it's positive. ABS, we're going to say plane dot y, so whatever the current plane y value is, minus positions y. We're going to say plane dot get data uh, position. So we're going to see uh, how far away the plane is from that position. And we're going to see if it's uh, less than or equal to maybe 10. Um, and as long as it's within that threshold, what we're going to say, and I think I actually have too many parentheses up. Oh, I think I'm, I'm good. If I, if it doesn't, if there is an error, I have too many parentheses in there, but we're going to say plane dot Y equals position Y and then plane dot get data position. And, uh, that will get us the value because the position again, once more, if you're coming in later or, or you've lost track of things, this value should be a zero through three or zero through two value. It's going to be the index and we have a positions array um, and that array has three values in it. So it's that index they're going to match. Um, so we're going to set the Y equal to that. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to save it. So let's go ahead and check it out now. So I'm going to move up and it's not bouncing around anymore um i know that it was probably difficult to see the bouncing um on the stream not bouncing around anymore on my screen that's because uh, it met the threshold and it it stopped um so um that's good so let's go ahead and uh keep going with this so we're if i wanted to i can scroll down here and collect all the points now But you see how smooth that motion is, or hopefully it's smooth. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and move around. I have three options that I can move around to. 
no matter where I click. See how I'm clicking here? Um, the distance, it has to be, it's whatever it's closest to. And I'm, I'm clicking closest to the middle point now. So now I'm clicking closest to this. Because remember, it's looking for the smallest uh, value. So the smallest value uh, to where my click is, and that's where it's going to move. So let's, uh, <clears throat> like I said, I have, I have some allergies today. So um, got, a, got a cough going on. Uh, let's go ahead and continue this. So let's go ahead and create our object pool uh, for our obstacle now. Uh, let's go ahead, uh, kind of where we have our Bitcoin group. I'm going to comment this out. And um, I'm actually just going to copy this. So this is going to be my obstacle group. And I don't actually have a variable for this, so let's go ahead and create it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some cleanup again towards the end. We have obstacle group. If I scroll back down, um, the default key is going to be obstacle because um, in case you missed it, um, our obstacle is right here. So this is our key. This is our image. This is our key. Um, so that's our obstacle. So let's go ahead and uh, maybe add a bunch of these to the... And we'll, we'll leave it at 10 for now. Maybe we add uh, some some obstacles coming in too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clone this. This is obstacle group. And uh, I don't know, maybe... Maybe I set this at 1500 or something. Probably not enough, but uh, what I also want to do is I want to set this to 360. Or no, I want to set this to maybe 595. We'll, we'll put it down at the bottom. Uh, we're going to randomize this in a minute, but uh, I think that's fine. The obstacle, what did I set the scale at for the obstacle previously? 0.5. Go ahead and, and, and make it that too. Uh, let's go ahead and refresh. Probably not going to do anything. Up, oh, it aired out anyways. Um, 174. What is 174? Uh, so obstacle S or X. Oh yeah, we commented it out. So we got to do the same logic as what we did for the Bitcoin group. Um, so I'm going to say obstacle group dot increase uh, X is going to be negative uh, three. And let's see if I'm using obstacle anywhere else. Right here, so we can easily say obstacle group. Um, so that way we can get every obstacle in that group. Um, and is game over, all of that can probably stay the same. Go to refresh. We have the Bitcoin coming in. Uh, we have our obstacles coming in. Um, so this is uh, pretty cool. I mean, Bitcoin's flowing faster than the obstacle. Uh, it failed just now, as uh, should be expected. If you recall, I don't have any logic that says uh, recycle them if they fell off the screen. Um, only if there was a collision. So I, I depleted my object pool of 10, and it uh, threw an error. So let's go ahead and fix that. So if I scroll down, I can copy the same code that I used for the Bitcoin group. And uh, let's go ahead and say obstacle group. And this should be an uh, obstacle. And uh, also, um, actually, I, I, I could destroy the obstacle kind of like I did up here. Or not destroy it, uh, kill and hide it. Um, but, you know what, let it, just let it run off the screen. It's cooler that way. So let's go ahead and, and try it out. So I'll, I'll slide down. Uh, we got killed. The obstacle is still going, um, but you know we're not. We're no longer counting the coins, which is good. Uh, so, kind of, kind of works as expected. So let's uh, let's keep building. Um, we're gonna try to get something somewhat playable uh, by the end of this, so that way we can proceed to the next topic on the next stream. Um, so what we can do to start now is, you know what, I'm going to shrink these uh, obstacles a bit because ideally we're going to layer them uh, potentially middle, top, or bottom. Uh, I'm also going to slow them down and make them the same speed. Um, so this, let's go ahead and say that they're both speed of, uh, I don't know, three. 
And uh, let's go ahead and say uh, inside of our add event here, oops. Let's go ahead and, and maybe add a uh, randomizer to this, this time event. So uh, let's go ahead and say, um, go ahead and say maybe uh, let Bitcoin position equals, I'm gonna say uh, random. So I'm gonna say math.floor and I'm gonna say math.random and I'm gonna say times three. It's gonna pick a value between zero and two um, because I didn't do plus one here. Um, so I have a Bitcoin position, it's gonna be random. And uh, what I can do is I can say for the Y, because we do have a positions array of possible positions, I'm gonna say positions Y Bitcoin position. And that will pick a random position from the list. Let's go ahead and refresh it. So you'll see that now Bitcoins are kind of everywhere. Uh, and then we'll want to collect them. We're gonna do the same thing with the uh, obstacle. Uh, but the obstacle, like I said, I think it needs to be shrunk down a little bit because it's gonna, we're gonna have an impossible wall here, I think. Um, so let's go ahead and adjust this. Maybe we change this to 0 0.3. See what that looks like. Probably fine. Uh, we could always increase it later. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, do another uh, randomizer. So I'm going to say let um, obstacle position equals. And I'm doing two different variables here because I don't want a lightning bolt to follow every Bitcoin. Uh, so I'm going to say math.floor, math.random times three. We have uh, three items in our array. And I'm going to say positions is spelled positions Y. And I'm going to say um, obstacle position. And uh, let's see what we get. I just want to reiterate here that, that we are live on this stream. If you have any questions, engage with me. Um, I'm, I'm happy to engage. Makes the experience a little more fun. Uh, but you'll notice here uh, that now I have obstacles coming from everywhere. Uh, they are kind of need to be spaced out a bit, I think, because the ones on the bottom at least are uh, whatever the random generator has created so far. Some of this kind of feels like it might be impossible. Yeah, I don't want it to be impossible. I just want it to be difficult. Um, but you'll see that we're using an object pool and we're getting kind of chaos going on right now. And I don't know if it's it's pretty smooth on my screen. I don't know what the stream looks like. Um, but um, that's good. I also noticed that if you look up top here, uh, you'll notice that the lightning is on top of the score. Um, that's probably not a good thing. Uh, we probably want to change uh, where the text is positioned. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we can fix that. So I'm gonna go into the code. I'm gonna do kind of what we did for the plane. At least I think we did it for the plane. Yeah, the set depth. So I'm gonna set the depth. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna go to wherever we set the text. I think it's at the top. We know that the, the lightning and the coins are depth zero. Um, so all we have to do is say score text uh, and we're gonna set this as a depth one or higher. The plane should never overlap it, so we should be fine. Um, so we're just setting the Z index on this. All right. What else have we got? Um, let's go ahead and fix what's happening with um, this timer. Where's the timer? Somewhere in here. Right here. Um, so we should probably space out these items a little bit better. Um, so uh, what we can do is, uh, you know, we can try and say if this is 1300, well, maybe this is, maybe this is 2000. And let's go ahead and see what happens. It may be no good still. I don't know. So we ran out of uh, something. We ran out of something on line 143. Maybe Bitcoins, maybe something else. 
Uh, we'll look into that in a second. We'll just expand on uh, whatever the, the object pool is. I still don't really like the spacing. Doesn't seem right to me. Um, so we can change that. There's there's going to be a lot of different ways uh, to fix this. Maybe we say um, we keep them at the same the same position, but we just um, we just alternate between coin and uh, obstacle, and I think it'll still get the same effect. So let's go ahead and set them at the same. So if we left it as is for now, uh, they would just overlap. So I'm going to create a variable, and we're going to do some variable cleanup at the end. Um, but I'm going to say something like var, um, it maybe is coin uh, pool item, maybe. And I'm going to say um, true. And then down here, inside of our timer, uh, we can say something like, uh, at least for, for here, if is coin feed item. And uh, so if it's a coin feed item, then it's going to be a, a coin that we want to distribute. Otherwise, this should be an obstacle. And we can just toggle it at the end. Let's go ahead and toggle it. So we're going to say uh, is coin feed item equals uh, whatever whatever the opposite is. I think it's coin pool. I already forgot what I named it. Um, yeah, let's try this out and see what we end up with. It was a lot better. Still looks like it could be a little impossible in, in some times. But uh I think it I think it works out. So let's uh maybe actually let's increase the speed. Let's increase the speed of these items. Instead of six, maybe let's go ahead and say eight. No, that's that's the plane. Um let's go ahead and say that. These are going to be maybe five. See what we end up with. Yeah, that looks better. Might even be too fast for now. Ah, I died. Let's go ahead and try it again. So not not bad, um, not not the most difficult game in the world, uh, but so far it it kind of accomplishes what we set out to do. Um, so just just to kind of confirm here on on everything that we've done, uh, we we added text, we added score, we added an object pool. Uh, the instead of having just two sprites that kind of destroy and create every time and and abuse our resources. They just get added back to the pool, and we take from the pool on, on a set interval based on our timer. Um, so this timer, and I am always losing track of it, right here. Um, so that's not so bad. That's actually quite good. Um, maybe, we, maybe we make it a little difficult, more difficult. Um, instead of having just one obstacle, let's, uh, let's change our um, what we're working with. So let's go ahead and say... Um, we have obstacle position. Um, instead of that, let's go ahead and say that's fine. Uh, yeah, let's let's go ahead and change it up. I had to catch my thoughts here for a second. So if it if it's not if it's not a if it's not a coin, we're gonna move this down. I'm gonna paste it in. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm also going to say let obstacle count equals math.floor 
and I'm going to say math.random. And I'm going to say, uh, in this case, maybe I say, um, because we can have, we have three different slots and we probably don't want all three slots to be full to create a, a possible game. Um, so maybe we say, um, so this would be zero to one plus one. Uh, yeah, so we're always going to have one at least. Yeah, so let's have always have one. Uh, but we can say uh, zero through two. It's going to be our option. So this is our count. So let's go ahead and say down here for let i is less than uh, or i equals zero. Uh, and then i is less than obstacle count. And i plus plus. So we're gonna we're gonna make this a little bit more difficult. All right, now we do want to randomize the position inside of that loop. We want every single one of those obstacles to have a random position. So let's check it out now. Let's go ahead and and uh, check it. So far, not difficult. Oh, there we go. We got two. See if it, uh, we're playing the game of randomness here. I don't know. It's not the most random thing. All right. So this could get, this could get difficult. We don't know where those obstacles are coming from or where the coins are being placed. Uh, we've, we've created a, a difficult game and it's based on click and I just, I just exploded. Um, so interesting. So let's go ahead and, and, and continue here. Actually, let's do some cleanup and then see if, uh, while, while we do that, maybe we can think of something else to add before the stream ends, uh, for today. Uh, so first of all, we're not, we're not using obstacle anymore. So, or Bitcoin. So let's remove both. I'm going to then refresh it and see any er if any errors pop up because maybe I missed a spot. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to refresh. It doesn't look like any errors popped up. I, I think I still have to solve that issue with, with, uh, the object pool running out. Um, but we'll worry about that later. All right. So game over, I think we could eliminate the game over. So let's, let's check it out. Where are we using game over? So we're using game over here for the obstacle group. Um, so let's do what we did for the, um, for the Bitcoin here. So I'm going to actually copy that and I'm going to say, uh, what am I going to say? I am going to say paste. So if it's not explosion, then we can, we can, uh, explode. I think that'll work. Go to remove, uh, is game over now. Refresh. Get a coin. Hit the laser. And we're done. Uh, so that worked. We just got rid of some variables. So let's check it out some more. Um, so is clicked. I don't even think we're using that. Yeah, we're not. So it's, it's going bye bye. Um, let's go see what else we can do here. Get rid of those comments. We'll walk through the code again, uh, before I close stream. All right, I think that's good. Uh, let's see what else we can do. Maybe, maybe what we can do is, um, maybe we can have it restart when the game is over. Um, so right now when we, when we explode, the plane is destroyed, but in addition to the plane being destroyed, maybe we, uh, restart the scene. Um, we're, we're within this, um, collider function or we're, we're within this, um, event right here. So our scoping is a little off, uh, but we can actually fix that. So the collider, we can actually provide our scope into this function. Um, so what we can say is null and then this. And by doing that, now we can say something like this.scene.restart. 
Let's go ahead and go back, check it out. We're gonna get exploded. And it should it should just start back up. Yeah, just start it back up. Um, so that looks good. Um, I'm trying to think what else we can do uh, before it's it's worthy to um, stop. So so if we wanted to complicate things even further, uh, what we can do is, you know what? Maybe we don't want the plane to be able to change positions mid movement. I don't know if that's too cruel. I think we'll leave it like that. I was going to say, maybe while the plane is in motion, we cannot pick another another uh, spot. Like if, if we go down and we feel like we messed up, well, we can't, we can't bail until the animation stops. Um, but you know what? We won't, we won't add that. Um, let's see what else. Actually, let's remove the, the collision boxes. Let's turn off debug mode. That's what we can do to, to clean things up. I'm gonna go back up and I'm gonna say debug mode is false. So there we go, we've got a much cleaner game. So not bad. Um, so let's let's walk through the code uh, just for the day and then I'll explain what we can do next time. Um, so first of all, uh, we removed the matter JS and we did a lot of cleanup overall. So we're just using arcade physics. That's all we need for this game. It's, it's simple enough. We did some variable cleanup um, and we also created a Bitcoin group and an obstacle group. And both of these represent our object pool. Um, so like I said, the object pool, the whole, the whole point of this is to prevent from having to create and destroy, create and destroy. Because every time you create and destroy a sprite in any kind of game engine, you are using resources uh, because it's, it's a little more involved than just saying, you know, remove this item because you're, you're messing with physics bodies. You're doing a lot of stuff like that. Um, so with pooling, um, when you need to remove something or destroy it, well, you're adding it back into the pool. So if you set a pool size of 10, like we did, well, we're able to pull 10 items from the pool. No more than that, because that's how many were created in the pool. And then we can add them back when they're done. Getting uh, notifications up here. All right. Uh, so that's the point of object pooling. We added some score text so we can keep track of our score. We also defined three positions on the y-axis on where our plane and our obstacles and our coins can show up um, just to make things more uniform. So these are three positions, very important. And we're defining whether or not uh, our object pool is, is uh, or our timer is going to spit out a coin or if it's going to spit out an obstacle. We scroll down, we look at our text. Uh, so our text, uh, we positioned at 10 and 10 for X and Y. We started at zero. We gave it a little bit of styling information and we gave it a depth. So we didn't want the uh, obstacles and the coins to appear on top of our score. So now our score appears on top. We scroll down. Uh, we look at uh, the data for our plane. So in phaser, you can set data to your sprites, just key values. So we set a score. Uh, value uh, because maybe players have scores just like they have hit points and mana and who knows what else items um, So we have a score. We set it at zero. We also define the default position um, So the default position is going to be the center um, Which is in that array remember positions why we have three values One being the center of that array For our groups uh, we created 10 and let's go ahead and increase it to maybe 15 because we were getting errors at some point in time uh, it doesn't hurt to make it just a little larger. Uh, we made them vis uh, invisible and inactive by default. Um, so we don't want all of our objects to appear on the screen. We just want to know that they are there for when we need them. Inside of our timer, so I didn't use a set timeout or a set interval in JavaScript because I think, and I'm, I'm not sure, I'm making stuff up here. I think that uh, Phaser wants you to do it this way because it probably does some stuff with the rendering. Um, so add event for the time, we're delaying it by one second. We're looping forever. Uh, we're saying, well, what is gonna, what's going to be our Bitcoin position? Uh, if it's a, if we're spitting out a coin, uh, let's go ahead and uh, put whatever that random Y position is. Likewise, uh, for the obstacle, uh, we're getting how many obstacles should show up for every iteration. And then we're randomizing the position of those obstacles. And in both circumstances, we're saying set active and set visible.
for our collider, uh, at least for our plane against a coin. So uh, when we collide, we're checking to make sure that the coin that we're colliding with is active and not uh, inactive or invisible. And as long as we are not currently exploding, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to add the coin back to the pool. We are going to get the current score, increase it, set it, and then set it as far as the text goes. And I'm sure there's a way to simplify this, but this way works. With our group for our obstacle, uh, we're again checking to see if we're already exploding, uh, because we don't want to do anything if we're already exploding. Uh, we're going to explode the animation. We are going to check and wait until the animation is done, so we actually destroy the plane, and then we restart the scene from square zero. And we're passing in the scope, so that way we can actually restart the scene. In the update, uh, so instead of just doing each individual uh, decrease of the X for these items, we are decreasing X for every item in the pool, whether they are active, inactive, visible, or invisible. Um, it, this is fine because the only interactions our plane can have is if they are visible and active. We are checking to see if they fall off the screen. So if the item, so we're looking at each individual item in the pool, if the item is active, so visible and active, and they are off the screen, they are less than zero, then we are adding them back to the pool. They're no longer used. Then we worry about our touch events or our click events. Um, there's no true uh, tap or click, so it's basically is the pointer down, uh, but we're getting the position. We are also getting the distances. So we want to know where we click, and we want to know the distance to each of the possible three points that we had defined previously. So we create a new array of that. Then we want to know where we were the nearest to when we clicked. And again, like I said, I don't, I don't know if there's a JavaScript function for this, but we basically want to see where do we click closest to so that way we can move our plane there. So what we did was we created a function to get the smallest item in the array. The smallest item being the smallest distance. And we're getting the index for that distance. And then we're setting it. So we're setting the plane position to that distance. Once we know the distance for the plane, we can say, you know what? Is the plane Y greater than the position based on the index that was set for the plane? If so, well, let's keep decreasing the plane. Otherwise, let's keep increasing the plane in the Y, dire y direction. And since we're using six and we have numbers like 125, 360, uh, 595, some of those are not divisible by six. Um, so we have to set a threshold. Otherwise the plane is just gonna bounce around uh, forever and it's not gonna look good. Um, so we're setting a threshold and as long as the plane falls within the threshold, which would be 10, uh, we can increase it or decrease it to your liking. Then we are firmly setting the position after that. So that way there is no bouncing. Um, so, not bad. We, we don't have that much code. I mean, look at it. We have 213 lines. A lot of it is just uh, HTML and kind of animation logic. But the actual gameplay logic, the stuff that, that makes the game exciting, like actually uh, moving the plane in an animated way, uh, actually colliding with these items, that's, in theory, it should take a lot more work than this. It's not, though. Um, so this is actually quite cool. Um, so in, 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 I think the next stream, I, I don't, I don't know for sure when it'll be. Um, and maybe I think of a different topic on top of this, but I'm thinking maybe the next stream we worry about audio. Um, I'm going to have to handcraft some audio and I'm not good at that. Just like I'm not good at graphics, but maybe we'll get some audio in the game. Maybe every time we collect a coin, it plays a sound. Every time we explode, it plays a sound. Maybe there's some background music, uh, who knows? Uh, and then maybe just maybe we worry about creating different different scenes. So maybe a start, start the game scene, or you got game over scene. Um, and then you can hit retry, um, just to show you that you can have different screens or scenes within your game. Um, and just in case this is your first time viewing, uh, the, the game or this, this particular stream topic, uh, this was actually based on a game that I had created, uh, once before. So, uh, I actually called it turbo prop. Uh, so this is probably one of the first blog posts that I did. This is the game that I made. Um, so this was actually made in Unity. So the whole point here was to try to reproduce this game. Um, and you'll notice that the graphics are crude in both games. 
Um, but look at the gameplay experience. It's like the same. Um, so again, this is, this is what we're trying to reproduce. Um, and this time it's in phaser. Um, after this, maybe we, maybe we worry about uh, doing it in unity. Uh, who knows? Um, if you wanted to check out this scheme, I think it's still on the, the mobile stores. Uh, you could definitely read about it on my blog. Uh, so I'll, I'll type it in the chat. Uh, website. Um, so that's, that's the blog. Um, if you're, if you're just joining, uh, this stream, or maybe, maybe, uh, you liked what you ha like what you saw, you want to see it again, uh, go to the YouTube channel because I'm probably going to upload it within a day or two, um, to the YouTube channel. You can watch it on demand. Eventually what I'll do is I'll create a course around this, uh, add some more subject material, uh, keep it interesting. Um, again, try, try to participate in these streams. Uh, if you're shy, even if you don't have any questions, just say hello. Um, I'd like to hear from you. Um, if you do want to see some courses, I've just put some more plugs out here right now. I do have a courses section uh, on the site. Um, so these are some of the courses that I've created in the past. Um, again, I'll be doing a phaser course at some point in time. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Probably after I'm done streaming with phaser. Um, and um, I think that's it. I, I appreciate... Uh, anyone who made it to the stream and, and hopefully I see you on the next one.